everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny. Hi, hi, let's get into the video, shall we? What is today's video about? Well, if you're new to my channel, first of all, um, my Tuesday talks on the way to therapy, they are, uh, they have a theme, there's a topic, and it's either mental health or chronic illness based. So today's topic's gonna be mental health. I, last week, did a video about how, if you're struggling with an eating disorder, how you can survive Thanksgiving or really any holiday involving food. And in that video, I touched on the fact that I have had a long history of binge eating and issues with that, but that I had overcome it. And I thought, well, why don't I just make this video today about how I overcame binge eating and give you just what worked for me. I mean, I'm not promising it'll work for everyone, but it worked for me. And I'll try to make this make sense. I feel like my brain's all over the place and I'm not wearing my glasses, so hopefully I won't stare at myself in the viewfinder. Shut up, Jimmy. Just start. Okay. Let me begin with, I am in recovery from anorexia and bulimia. I have been hospitalized multiple times for that over the years in high school and college. And then I've been in recovery for a while now. I'm doing okay right now, but there was a long period where I was not doing okay. Now, how to get into this. The thing that was the hardest for me was to break the whole cycle of restricting and then my body needing to compensate for that restriction by benching. And then when I would bench, it would make me feel so bad about myself and so uncomfortable in my body that I'd wanna overcompensate for it. And I would restrict the next day and I would come up with all these weird things I had to do. I would purge, I would overexercise. It would get to the point where my life was so out of control. I would miss class when I was in college because if I had eaten too much the day before, I felt disgusting. I felt like I either needed to be in the gym or I needed to punish myself. And I would often punish myself by preventing myself from doing things that were really important to me. They were self-inflicted punishments. There's been like parties I haven't been able to enjoy. So just a lot of events that I haven't been able to fully be present because I was either worried about eating the food there or I was eating a lot of the food there because it was stuff that I wouldn't allow myself to have in a normal day. And I've learned when you don't allow yourself to have something in a normal day, like when you tell yourself this is off limits, no, that is bad. It psychologically tells your body, well, you can't have this. Like you, you can't have it. So when your brain sees it, it's like, oh my God, I have to eat all of it because I'm not gonna ever get it again. That sets you up for the whole cycle. So I had to learn how to teach my body that these things are not bad like there's something that I can have whenever I want it I just choose not to have large quantities of it I had to get to a place though where that happened and it really took a long time first of all it was a long time of me ignoring every treatment center every doctor every nutritionist everybody who was telling me what I needed to do I thought they were lying to me I thought they just wanted me to get fat I thought I knew more because I was the one with the eating disorder I was the one in control and I didn't and it got to the point where I was just exhausted and my metabolism was shot to hell. I had gotten to this place where it had been well over a decade of me dealing with an eating disorder and food issues and I couldn't do it anymore and I had to figure out how to stop everything. And it was right after my dad died. He had sacrificed so much for my disorder and so when he died, I had to make a decision because I didn't have him to lean on anymore. I only had myself and so I had to make a decision. Do I want this to be my life because I really haven't lived. I missed out on all these experiences that normal people my age are experiencing. I felt very much, intellectually I was the same, I was my age, but emotionally I was younger, a lot younger because I feel like I stopped kind of in high school instead of emotionally growing through college because I stunted myself with my eating disorder when I was anorexic and then when I became bulimic it was just this mad chaotic chaotic need is the word need to get back to being anorexic and my body 
after being anorexic was like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. We're not gonna allow this again, no matter how much I wanted it, or my eating disorder part of my brain wanted it. So when I was anorexic, I didn't binge eat. I was very, very controlled. Every little aspect to a T was controlled in my life, in my brain perfectly. And then the minute I was put in the hospital and I was all control was taken from me, it was like all these things in my life flew up in the air and I couldn't ever balance them again. And looking back in retrospect, these are still things that I'm trying to deal with from back then. I'm dealing less with the food stuff in present day 2018, but I'm dealing more right now with the fact that back then my idea of being able to handle stuff, I could really handle stuff, but yet I was mentally a mess with my eating disorder. But now my eating disorder is under control, but I can't mentally handle stuff. So I'm still in the process of recovery. It's just a different kind of recovery. It's the um, emotional part of it. Eating disorders and emotional stuff go hand in hand. You deal with your emotions and your feelings with food. There's psychological aspects around everything. When I was anorexic, it was about control. There was a lot of stuff, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video. Binge eating, it was just a matter of I'm trying to control and I can't. And then when anything emotional or anything scary, came instead of me processing those feelings and sitting there i would eat i would binge and i would freak out and then i would overcompensate i want to be really careful about saying specifics but i also want to say stuff that would help people i try to walk this line carefully but the, i mean there were things i did that were like i look back and i'm like how why was i in college why was i in college i should not have been in college i should have been dealing with this when I was in college though, is when I really did start, well, it was right after, so right after high school, I just got out of the hospital recovering from anorexia and I had been hospitalized for three months and it was three months where I couldn't move. I wasn't supposed to move and they force fed me, rapidly gained like 25 pounds in three months, but it wasn't muscle or anything because I couldn't move. And also when you start eating again after being anorexic, the weight distribution is very uneven. You feel very uncomfortable in your body. You already feel a loss of control, but your body's suddenly bigger, you all of a sudden have to start feeling things. You get it all at once and everyone around you is expecting you to not screw up and, and continue your, your eating disorder and it's unrealistic. And once I got out of the hospital, I desperately wanted to lose the weight and my body wouldn't let me and that's when I started binge eating for the first time and I didn't know how to handle it and it kind of spiraled into this entire mess. I remember being home and I didn't want any food in the house that I would binge on. I would only want safe foods in my house because I had no control over my impulses at all. And my mom had gone grocery shopping, I remember this one instance, and she had all this food that was terrifying to me. I had a massive breakdown in our kitchen and my dad overheard it and he got really upset that I was getting mad at my mom for buying all this stuff and he told me to stay out of the kitchen. He just, he didn't understand and I think he thought he was trying to help me but it, it wasn't. And I remember I took off in the middle of the night. I walked five miles, ended up at a friend's doorstep, but I, I couldn't physically handle it. Like I couldn't handle that moment that my mom had all that food in the house. And that continued all the way up until I moved to Los Angeles, right? And when I was in college, I had a roommate like at one point who was someone I didn't know. They were paired with me and she was a diet fanatic. It was an awful pairing. All she cared about was dieting and she did not have an eating disorder. She was just had a diet mentality and it was in my face 24 seven, but also she had these foods that I wouldn't allow myself to eat and I wouldn't allow myself to have food in the house. So I would find myself binging on her food, but then I couldn't replace it fast enough. And it became this whole thing where she eventually moved out because it was too much for her. There was one time that I ate her food and I freaked out so badly that I drove back home to Atlanta, which was two hours away, because I couldn't physically sit there with myself and handle it. It was awful. And then throughout college, I just went through this cycle of restricting and then binging and then having to overcompensate and feeling like I could never catch up with the amount of calories I was eating. My metabolism was all over the place and I was very, very messed up in the head. It's just looking back, I just don't know how I did it. I couldn't listen to any of my doctors. I couldn't listen to anyone because they were telling me things like the concept of intuitive eating, which is where your body, if you really listen to your body's cues, it's telling you what it needs. I couldn't do that. That wasn't rigid enough for me. That wasn't a meal plan. That wasn't a certain amount of calorie. You know, like it wasn't something that I could follow. So I just learned really, really bad habits. And I moved to Los Angeles. That's when I decided to really recover was when I moved to Los Angeles. And I relapsed 
quite a few times until I finally slowly stopped relapsing. And for me, relapsing was actively being bulimic or actively being anorexic, going to those behaviors. Binge eating for me was not considered a relapse. That was me trying to figure out food. It was how I dealt with that afterward was the relapse part, or the non-relapse part. So when I first moved to LA, I had nothing in my apartment that I could eat and I needed to teach myself how to eat again. I was exhausted. It was like I couldn't keep the cycle up anymore. It was like me moving across the country was my time to try this, see if it would work, and to find out a way to start handling my feelings again. So I started with nothing in my apartment and I had a therapist because when you stop actively trying to do eating disorder behavior, any addictive behavior, you're going to have a bunch of emotions pop up and a bunch of feelings and you're gonna to have to all of a sudden start dealing with these things that you had coping mechanisms to avoid. And when you're bombarded with all of this stuff and you have to learn how to feel and express feelings again that is not in a disordered way, it is a lot to take on on top of learning how to eat right. So like no joke it's hard work there's a support group in Los Angeles that was free not specifically for any type of eating disorder just people with food issues and I went to that as many times as I needed to they're all over the country if you're interested direct message me I'll tell you um, what I went to it's something I should not be talking about on camera but it really helped me and my purpose was to not go back toward anorexic or bulimic behaviors. That was the most important thing for me was to figure out how to handle food without both of those things and to figure out a way to stop my binge cycle. And the cycle part, the restriction part and the over-exercising part and the purging part was the, the stuff that I would use to control the binging. So when it was taken away, I just had the binging and my feelings and it was really overwhelming. I bought myself um, some clothes, maxi dresses, really long maxi dresses so I could still feel feminine when I felt very uncomfortable in my body because before, previously, what I would do is I would feel awful about myself and then I would dress awful. I would wear just like oversized clothes, sweats, things were ugly because I felt like I didn't look good in normal clothes so I would wear things that were ugly and then I wouldn't want to go out and be around people because I felt ugly. And it was just like, I, was, I wasn't helping the situation. So I thought, okay, well, if I bought these long dresses, I can't see my body. I can't feel my legs touching or anything, you know, anything that would make me uncomfortable. I would feel pretty enough to go out. For years, I wore those dresses whenever I felt gross about my body. And I still do, if I have a day where I'm having a really bad body image day, I'll try to wear something nice to cover it up. But I did that. And then as far as to stop the binging part, I would have to teach my brain that these foods are not off limits. So. For instance, I would bring an item of food into the house. I'm just going to say, say donuts. I loved donuts. So I would bring a box of donuts in. Now, in the past, I would eat all the donuts and I would freak out about it. And it's because my brain said, you can't have any more donuts. So what I would do is I would eat the donuts and then if I binged on it, I would immediately make myself the next day go out and get donuts again and eat them. Like the scariest thing ever. Everything in me wanted me to restrict the next day or to only eat vegetables or to go on some crazy juice fast or to hike a million miles. Like everything in me. But I was like, uh, I have to go back and buy donuts. And so I would do that and I would go back and buy donuts. And I wouldn't eat as many of them. I might eat more than just normal or I'm comfortable with but I wouldn't eat as many of them and then I'd have to go out and buy donuts again. And I had to do that with so many different food groups so I could show myself these things are not off limits. And once I allowed myself to have these things that I would only eat at parties or if I was babysitting and the parents were like, you can have whatever you want in the pantry and then I would go crazy and freak out. All of that stuff I would slowly incorporate and it was very slowly. Eventually I was able to have some of the things that I would eat normally, like peanut butter or something is a regular staple of my diet. For a long time I couldn't have peanut butter in my house. Peanut butter is in my pantry all the time now and it's not a big deal. That was a huge deal back in the day. But I did that with a lot of things. I think the hardest thing for me was pizza because pizza is something that I can eat an entire pizza. So I started slowly with pizza. I would go actually go get a slice. Instead of having the whole pizza there, I would go get just a slice. Cause a lot of places sell them by the slice until I got comfortable eating pizza in a non-party setting and just have it be like a normal meal. And then I would start ordering pizzas. And at first I did eat a much bigger portion than normal, but 
eventually once I've had enough pizzas coming in, I would eat a normal serving and I'd be able to keep the rest for later. Another thing I had, because when I was anorexic and after anorexia, up until, I mean, uh, for a very long time, everything was very controlled and portioned. So I would eat things I knew what was in them. I knew the caloric amount, I knew the nutrition facts. So I would eat all of it, especially when I was anorexic, I was hungry. So when I would allow myself to eat something, I wouldn't just eat a portion of it, I would eat all of it. And so I would allot these things that I could eat so I could eat all of it. So that mentality traveled with me because when you're in the hospital, they force you to eat every single thing on your plate. I mean, if you don't like it, no matter what, you have to finish your plate or you get supplemented with Ensure or some kind of nutritional supplement. That stuck with me. So I think that played into my binge eating too because when I would get something like a bag of chips or something, I in my head, I'm like, I have to eat the whole thing. This is a serving. Even though it has serving sizes on it, my brain couldn't really divvy that down. Now, when I eat chips, I will admit I eat by servings. So if a bag of chips has like eight servings and like 15 chips are in a serving, I'll eat 15 chips at once. I won't just eat two chips or 20 chips. I'll eat it in increments of the serving. That is something that I still do. I do have little behaviors like that that are left over, but I feel like they're harmless because it's not like avoiding the chips and I'm not eating the entire bag. I'm eating a serving size because my brain can understand that. It minimizes anxiety for me, but doesn't hurt me, you know? The cravings eventually got under control and I started craving things that I used to not crave before because before I was craving these things I wouldn't allow myself to have. And then once I started allowing myself to have them, it opened up room for me to crave things that actually my body needed and wanted. So that's where the intuitive eating came in. I was able to say, oh, I'm really craving fruit right now. Instead of, oh, I'm really craving a bunch of french fries because that's off limits. It was the off limits part for so many years that made me crave these things that were on my bad list, which aren't bad in moderation at all. But I never craved the really good stuff for you back then because I didn't have room for it in my brain. And it was really interesting to see that start to come into play. And now I really crave a variety of things and I really, I try to honor it as best as I can. Oh, metabolism. So one of the things I was also told was that my metabolism would work itself out once I started allowing myself to eat normally. And that's the thing I thought everyone was full of BS about. And guess what, they were right. So I got to this place, my metabolism was shot from my restriction and bench cycle. And so I had to know that there was a point coming when I was gonna be very uncomfortable in my body and to trust that a lot of what I was seeing was not real. A lot of it was my eating disorder. Some of it might've been real because it was added weight, but I had to trust that eventually my body would even out, my weight would distribute, what I didn't need would go away, and I would get to a body that was me and my set point. And it takes time. If you've had an eating disorder for a while, if you've had disordered eating for a while, it's not gonna happen overnight it's gonna take time. It can even take a year, year and a half. But if you, in the middle of that, stop and start restricting again, you're screwing your metabolism up and the timeline's gonna start again. The time's gonna pass anyway. And once you get to a place where you mentally just are so exhausted by everything and you're able to accept that this is just gonna be uncomfortable for a bit, the time will pass and you're gonna be so proud of yourself. And you're gonna see, oh, I get it now. I had a friend a couple years ago when I moved to LA and she was in that hard part. And I kept telling her, I was like, you have to sit through it. You have to sit through it. You have to fight literally every urge in you that's telling you these rules and these things you have to follow to do to make this feeling go away. You just have to feel the feeling. And she did and it worked out for her and her metabolism kicked back in. It, it works. You just have to let your body do what your body's meant to do. And so many of us, with this society telling us you have to look a certain way, especially a decade ago, being rail thin was the most important thing in the world. Now the Kardashians, I feel like, have really made curves acceptable. And whether you hate the Kardashians or not, they've made curves acceptable. And so many people are, are embracing curves and so many people are speaking out about the media and stuff in, in terms of advertising. and. I personally don't see my friends freaking out about dieting as much anymore. And I personally don't see as many of those ads and stuff. It is more about fitspiration now and that's a whole other a compulsive exercise thing that is a whole other story. But in terms of body, 
pipes and stuff. I feel like this is a very good time to allow yourself to embrace your body. You have the benefit of all these resources and all these positive people embracing positive body image. So it's a great time to start and to really try to love yourself. I stopped weighing myself, which was so hard. I did not allow myself to be weighed. I didn't allow myself to get weighed at the doctor. I told them, no, thank you. That worked for years. I just have one doctor now, which I am required to be weighed for just because I have lupus and it's important because I'm on some very, very serious medication. But before that, I just would say, no, please don't weigh me. And if a doctor doesn't need to weigh you, they're not gonna weigh you. It helped me because I would, as much as, much as I would tell a doctor, please don't tell me what I would weigh if they weighed me, or I would be blind weighed, I would turn around so I couldn't see the number, nobody would listen to me. Somehow the chart would be left open and I would see my number and I would spin about it for a really long time. I had to get to a point where that number wasn't important while I was getting my metabolism under control. So that's what I did. And now it's still hard for me to see my weight and accept it, especially once I developed lupus and I couldn't move for a while. My body, I did a video about it in the past, but my body changed because I wasn't moving. My food was the same though, but because I was so sick, I couldn't, my biggest thing was I can't, I can't go back to my eating disorder behavior because I have overcome all of this stuff. It took me so many years to do. I can't go back there and fight lupus, like too much. So I had to be uncomfortable in my body and that was really hard to accept any weight gain and to trust that it was temporary and all of that. And I'm still dealing with that. My body is very different than it was a couple of years ago. So it, I think I'll always have body image issues, but it's something that I really want to get over and I really want to find ways to accept myself. I've really been talking forever, so I'm gonna leave it at that. If you have any questions, if you have any things you want me to clarify or go into more detail about, I can make more videos or feel free to DM me. My info will be below. And until then, I will see you next week with another one of these videos. And before that, I might post something. I don't know, I post whenever. I am gonna be doing Vlogmas though. So starting December 1st through Christmas, I am, knock on fake wood, gonna be posting videos every day. They're gonna be Vlogmas related, but I'm gonna try to also keep these videos up. I'll see you whenever I decide to film a new video. Until then, have a great day, bye.